Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we've got part four of our B6674 sew along. We're going to be finishing things up today um, and first things first we're going to be I'm going to showing you how to level a hem if you've had your hem drop um, and then we're going to be doing the uh, buttons down the buck buttonholes and buttons and uh then the actual hem and then I think we're done. <laughs> so that's exciting. Uh, if you stay tuned till the very, very end of the video, I will have twirls of me in the finished dress. So you can see it all in its glory and styled and all that kind of stuff. So definitely stay tuned till the very end to see that um, if you're interested. So with hems. <laughs> there are um, a few different ways that you can level a hem. I'm going to be showing you my personal favorite way, but I wanted to talk about the other two just in case you've got, um, it, your body isn't uh, necessarily balanced front to back or even side to side. So um, ideally you would be able to put the dress on and then have a spouse, partner, friend, whatever, mark your hem for you, which would basically be you wearing the dress and them taking a hard um, ruler of some sort, yardstick, that kind of thing, measuring up from the ground, like having it basically against the ground and then just marking the same spot on the ruler all the way around the dress. So this is fantastic. Again, if you're not completely balanced, which I mean, none of us are really all that balanced, but if you're very, if at all, but if you are um, just very have differing, um, you know, front and back hems, if often, you know, if you've got uh, a sway back, for instance, and maybe your back hems tend to be higher than your front hems, you know, to keep that even, that's a definite, um, I mean, you would need to do that probably, even if you don't have a hem that's dropping, just to hem things anyway. But, <laughs> that's one way to do it. Alternatively, if you have a mannequin or a dress form of some sort. You can also put it on to that. Just make sure that your waist seam lines up perfectly with the waist on the mannequin. You know, you want to pin it in place just to make sure everything is staying even all the way around. And then you can do the same thing. You can go around and um, mark that way. Obviously, that is making the hem completely even um, based from the waist. So if you're, again, if you're a body type that needs more help, um, with differing hems from front to back or from side to side or whatever, that one might not work as well because that's creating a very even hem. But it's the same idea. It's just that you're doing it on a mannequin instead of on a body. Now, another option is this little doodad. So this is a, um, a hemmer. Actually, mine's super dusty. I don't use mine very often because it is so messy. And actually, the um, um, it's missing pieces off of it. <laughs> There should be a uh, bit, well, is it down there? Oh, it is on there. Okay, so this little thing right here, there's chalk in there. So what you do is you decide, and if you can see, there's the different measurements, and I'm missing the legs to make it stand up properly. I mean, I'm not missing them, they're just in a pile over there. So basically, what you do is you go around, you have the dress on, and you want this line here to get right in the folds of your skirt. And you just have this in your hand, and let me see if you can see it. Did you see that? Can you see the chalk shoots out? But if this needs to be right against your fabric, so when you hit the chalk, um, I mean, it'll get chalk over the whole dress, but there'll be a, a higher concentration at a line that's right where ever you have adjusted this, you know, this goes up and down. So then you just road turn, you leave this, don't touch this, you're just turning your body, hitting the little bobber, and it puts a chalk line where you want. So that's a fantastic, if you just don't have anyone that can help you do your hem, that is a way to go. I never use this because it's a little bit messy and um, I don't I don't have a problem with my hem being completely even all the way around, so I just I just do it that easy way, and that's actually the way I'm going to show you today when we go over to the cutting table. Um, but yes, this is an option. I got mine from Wawac. I will leave they still have them. I will leave a link down to this little tool below because uh, if you do have issues with being you know, where you don't need a balanced hem, you need the hem to fit your body perfectly. Um, this is definitely an option if you don't have anyone else to um, you know mark up from the floor for you. That's what this is. Again, I just, it's just messy putting the, the um, chalk in and, um, you know, it kind of gets chalk everywhere. But, you know, if that's your only option, it does, you know, it'll get the job done. 
So you just want to make sure that it, that that little thing is touching the fabric because then you'll get a line of chalk because it will billow, chalk will billow out. <laughs> so you want to minimize that as much as possible to get the line. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the cutting table and I'm going to show you how I even out my hems um, because with rayon it will typically fall on the bias which is usually your um, side seams. So another thing to say usually the front center front of your skirt and center back of your skirt will not drop because they'll be on the straight of grain so that is a good um, mark that's usually the shortest point when the fabric has uh, dropped the, sh the best point to mark and then you just go off that all the way around so we're going to go over to the uh, cutting table I'm going to show you how I do my hems and then we're going to cut those off um, and then we will sew the hem and then uh, put on our buttons and buttonholes so uh, yeah, stay tuned again till the end for the uh, twirls and I will see you guys next time. We'll have a tutorial next week and I still haven't thought what I'm gonna do for my next sew along. Um, but yeah, there'll be a tutorial next week on Sunday. All right, hope you guys have a good weekend and I will see you next time, bye. Okay, for this demonstration, I've got you at the other end of my cutting table so that we can see the full length of the skirt. So over here on this side, um, is my, obviously this dress opens up because it's got a button down placket. Um, this is the front of the dress with the uh, placket all sewn. And this will be on straight of grain. So this is a pretty good spot to um, get your, your measurement off of. And this is the way I do all of my um, leveling of hems. Now you'll see that it's very ripply here at the bottom. I think that's just the nature of the fabric. So what I'm doing, I have a seam line right here. So I'm just doing, I'm not worried about everything over here. I'm just doing the section by section. Cause now I'm trying to remember, I guess I just have two front panels and then a back panel. Um, just to keep everything nice and flat. So I really just want, um, and I've lined this up straight of grain on my uh, cutting table just to make it easier for you to see. But I just really want this first section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a meter stick or a yard stick, and here's my, it's probably hard to see, but my waist seam is right here. So I'm butting this up to my waist seam and I'm measuring down and it's hitting right at 26. So now I'm just gonna go around and it should be pretty much 26. Move my chalk. Just going by, okay, so see now we're starting to get off. And I'm just gonna pivot. There's where it's on. So as it starts to get off, I'm taking some Taylor's chalk, some white Taylor's chalk, you could also pin it. And then I'm just marking at that 26 mark. And you will notice as you get closer to the side seam, the more off it will get. So you're just measuring down from the waist. You can even go over here to the actual side seam. Make it nice and straight. I guess it's, this did not drop as bad as some. I mean, it dropped, but not as bad as some. Some will drop a couple of inches. Okay, and then what I like to do is before, while everything is laid flat on this first section, I'm just gonna go through and cut right, it's probably hard for you to see, but I can see right at my Taylor chalk mark, just this little section that I have already Go right across that seam okay so there so this really hasn't dropped much um, like three quarters of an inch I guess so now we're gonna rotate it 
So the idea is you just want this to lay as flat as possible. So now I'm going to set the side seam up pretty straight. But because this is a flared skirt, I don't know that it's necessarily a circle skirt, but it is a flared one. Um, there's my other. I'm actually going to go and kind of break this up, the back part up into two. So we're just gonna kind of guess about there is about center back-ish. So now that this part is flat, now I will go through keeping that 26 number in mind. And you'll notice as I go around, I'm also um, kind of picking it up. What have I done with my chalk? Like this. <laughs> I'm picking it up, I'm not sliding it because I don't want to accidentally move my fabric. It's just easier. We're getting a little bit more of a drop here on the back part. I honestly thought this would drop quite a bit more because it is a crinkle rayon, which are notorious. They're beautiful, but man, do they drop. Okay, I can tell we're getting close to center back, which is where we cut on the fold because we're back at our 26. back with my scissors. I'm leaving the tape measure there. Those were all 26, but I want to know where I stopped measuring. Okay, so there's that piece all over. Okay, I'm just gonna that so I know and there we go so not a ton that we had to cut off but that is how I level my hems. Okay, I'm not hemmed it yet, but I'm gonna show you how I mark my buttonholes. I do not ever use the buttonhole guides that come with patterns. Instead, I use, this is called a Simflex and it gets big and small, and it does perfectly spaced pleats and buttonholes. Um, I'll link the one that I bought. I think I got mine off Amazon, to be honest. But it also has um, measurements here for buttons and that sort of thing. Now, I'm using 10 buttons on this dress, so that only has eight places, but um, I'll show you how I make that work too. Okay, so what I've done, this is the bodice of the dress right here. Um, which will just give you an idea. I have marked with this pen my apex. So I put this on and this is the fullest part of my bust. I definitely want a button here because <laughs> it's going to help with gaping later on. So um, I like, and that's like the middle of the buttonhole. Um, I'm actually probably going to stretch this out as much as it will go. So this is the middle of the button where I want the middle of my buttonhole, but I actually like to mark the bottom of my buttonholes because my machine starts at the bottom and then goes up and comes back down. So, um, let's see here. This is where you can really easily play and have fun. 
my button though, I do want it up. I may just go and fudge it a little bit. So this is where I definitely want a buttonhole there. But I also need one at the top. So this is where you can play with your spacing. Sorry, you, I'm off frame here at the bottom. But I could go a little smaller and just not take my buttons all the way down to the end. Hmm. No, I only have room for two. Okay, I'm going big again. <laughs> All right, so basically what I'm going to do is I take a pen, so I'm going to line up, and this gets all wobbly because of the nature of the fabric. Gosh, I kind of also want a button right there at that waist, though. This is also the plus of this Simflex, is you can mess around with it before you mark anything. Um, okay, so this is, what, this is what I'm dealing with here. I really want one at the waist, because I think I need one at the waist which is right, my waist seam is right here, but evenly spaced, and I need one somewhat close to the top, which would be this one. But then I'm right in the middle with my one at my fullest point, so I might get some gaping. Well, we could go bigger. I'll most definitely get gaping because then this button was, this is the bottom of the buttonhole. I guess we could move it down just a hair. Okay, I'm just gonna go with this. And if we have some gaping, we'll just have to do a little press stud because I would rather have one at the waist. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm mar matching up this um, edge of the simplex to the edge of the fabric, and you guys aren't gonna be able to see it, but I can see little measurements in here. So it says half inch is right here. So if I mark it right, right at this half inch mark right here, I know I'm a half inch from this tip. So um, that is, I think I wanna be about, I think I have half inch buttons. So I think I wanna be just in between maybe the half inch and the three quarters, like five eighths and I'm making a dot. And there's a perfect little spot there for you just to stick your little, and I'm gonna be doing my, my buttonholes um, vertically. I guess I should have said that. Okay, now this is just, um, I'll be going out of frame here. So let me scoot it up. Okay, so I've got, I wanna be very careful at this point because I don't want to move the Simflex at all. Um, I want it to, I mean, I don't wanna like expand it at all. I want my distance to stay the same. So there I have eight that have been done, but I need two more because I've got 10. So I'm gonna very carefully shift that down and 
do two more. I've just lined up my dot into that one. And there we go. Ten dots. And that's how I mark my buttonholes. So um, I'm going to take you over to the machine and we're going to hem and then we'll put our buttonholes in. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you how I mark my buttons and we will, um, well, we'll cut our buttonholes open. Then I'll show you how I mark my buttons. We'll sew those on and then we will do the waist carriers and then we'll be finished. Alrighty, it's time to do a hem. Okay, so I've got wrong side of my dress up. This is how I do, I'm doing a narrow hem. This is how I do my narrow hems. Um, you could also do a uh, bias tape to finish off your hem, you know, tuck it under like a bias facing. Um, but with a skirt, I mean, this isn't a horribly curved hem. I mean, they're obviously a circle skirt would be more curvy. <laughs> but this is enough that um, I wouldn't want to do a very deep hem. And to be honest, I'm not even sure what the um, pattern calls for. Okay, so I'm just, I do this all by eye. I just start, and obviously this is raw. It's raw edge. I've not finished anything off. Sorry, and I'm also trying to wedge my thigh. Oh, hold on. My battery's dying. <laughs> all right, sorry about that. So what I do, this is very difficult with this in my lap. Now this is a raw edge. I'm just folding it over once. I basically sew the hem twice. Um, I just think it makes a nice uh, narrow hem. So I'm just going to start and as I go around I am folding up about a quarter of an inch to the wrong side that you just can get an easier and I'm just going like a couple of inches at a time and it, um, you're going to have some rippling here on the back side because you are folding uh, a longer length into a shorter length. That's okay. With this little bit of mount, you go slow. It should all ease in just fine. So I'm just going to go all the way to the other side of the skirt. Okay, once we've done that first pass, I do this with all of my plackets. I come back and trim off at an angle. Could you guys see that? Like right there at those plackets. Because when we fold it up again, it will just keep it um, laying a little bit flatter. Also notice I have not touched anything with an iron yet. I mean, the hem. <laughs> Other parts, obviously, have been pressed, but I don't press in advance. This is so much quicker. Even though you're sewing it twice, um, you just get a better finish. Um, hold on, I got a long thread. Just changed my, changed my thread there. Okay, so now that we have folded it up once, we have the raw edge there, of course. Now we're going to fold it up again, and it should fold right on that original... Um, stitching line pretty easily. So now we're just going to do the same thing and just kind of go a little bit by little to keep that curve in there. Yeah. Just makes a really, so you have two lines of stitching that you can only see from the back. Um, but I just think this is such an easier way to do a narrow hem. Obviously I could go much narrower if I had um, even thinner fabric, but this is good enough for what I needed to do. And also this time I am just sewing right on the folded edge here. All right, 
So now I will, now I will go press it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do that, and then we're gonna put our buttonholes in. All right, so I'm set up at my home machine now, and um, I've got my button right here. So this is my buttonholer foot, and um, I don't know if you guys have machines like this or not, but my basically my button goes in the back of the buttonhole foot like so, and then it gets put onto the machine. I already have my bobbin thread up and my top thread up. And then there's a little lever that comes down right here, and it goes right behind there. So that's how my automatic buttonhole foot works. I need to change it to what I need it for. Okay, and then like I mentioned, um, oh, before we go any further, I forgot to say, um, anything that buttons up, down, whatever, uh, placket on a woman, the buttonholes go on the right side. So it buttons right over left, and on a man, it's the opposite. I have made my husband a uh, Christmas blouse one year because I put his buttons on the wrong side. <laughs> I even thought about it. But anyway, um, so all of my buttonhole markings are on my right placket, and that's right placket when worn. So when it's on my body, it's the right side. So I have a little um, green dot here that I am going to... Oh, this is going to be difficult because I can't see. Um with the machine. That's my top one, huh? Okay. And that's gonna be like right at five eighths. And I'm lining it up there. I'm trying not to hit the camera. Okay, and then once I've got it, hold on. It's all fouled up here underneath the foot. Oh, for the heaven's sake. This is much easier without a camera in your lap. Okay, once that is all there lined up, oops, sorry, then I just um, either hit the, the pedal or I can hit the start and stop button. I usually just go with the pedal. Okay, then we release it and I don't have any scissors nearby. Trim our threads, and there is one buttonhole. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the other nine, and then I will um, bring you back over to the um, cutting table and show you, um, well, actually, maybe. What I do is I use, I'll show you what I use. Yes, I'll meet you back at the cutting table. Let me do these other nine. <laughs> okay, so... Hopefully you can see. Can you see my buttonhole right there? There's a buttonhole right there. <laughs> what I like to use is, this is Dritz Fray Check. Um, I will link it down below. Um, get mine from Wawak. I um, put a line, this is basically liquid nylon. I put a line of this stuff into the center, oops, sorry, into the center of the buttonhole. And to keep it from getting hard, I actually iron it. Put a little steam. It helps to keep, I mean, it sets it without the fabric getting really, really hard in that area. You know, sometimes you can get those really like uh, crispy, crumbly um, buttonholes. And this was a trick that I learned in the bridal workroom. Sorry. And then I flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Okay, camera okay, up. So this just keeps your um, buttonhole from fraying, basically. Makes it a little bit more stable, and because you're cutting fibers in there inside the buttonhole. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go, um, I mean, I usually do them all one at a time, I mean, all at a time, but I'm gonna go do the rest. Um, and then we're gonna go over and I'll show you the chisel that I use to cut them open. All right. So now that I have my buttonholes sewn and I have put the fray check on them, I'm going to cut them open. And I use a tool that I need to find. Um, there it is. A buttonhole chisel. It actually has, I mean, I have had mine sharpened. You can have these very easily sharpened. I'll link the one that I have from Wawak down below. Um, but it, I mean, it's a chisel <laughs> and it makes cutting your buttonholes very easy because you don't have to worry about accidentally going through a buttonhole or, um, or whatever. 
So um, the buttonholes may be kind of hard to see, but there's one here. So you basically line it up and then press. And then you've got a very clean cut open buttonhole. So I am going to cut the other nine open real quick. Okay, once our buttonholes are all cut open, this is how I like to do my buttons. I actually put things, uh, the placket together, wrong sides together. Obviously that's not how it'll be buttoned, but this is the easiest way to line up seam lines and whatnot. So I line them up like this, and then I will take pins and just stick it through the center here. So that's the waistline. I just want to make sure that lines up. And of course you want to make sure that the top lines up and I'm just sticking a pin through the center of the, um, buttonhole through to the other side. And if you make sure that your plackets are just lined up here at the edge, then they will overlap just perfectly. So I'm going to do this all the way down. There's 10 buttons. It's a lot. <laughs> Oops, see, that's got off. I thought maybe I was pulling that a little tight. So the best is to start at points of reference. So obviously I want my hem to line up. one moved and then we should be good yep okay so now we flip it over so now the right side of the other side of your placket should be up and then we're just going to take any kind of marking I'm using a friction pen and I'm just going to mark right where those um, pins come out and that will be you may stab yourself a little <laughs> but that will be where um, my button goes so then that makes it really easy when we go back to the machine because I sew my buttons on with the machine Okay, and then once those are all marked, you can pull all your pins out. So you're no longer stabbing yourself. Okay, now we will go and um, sew our buttons on. Okay, time to put on the buttons. So my machine does buttonholes. Basically what it does is it drops the feed dogs down so the feed dogs are disengaged and it just does a zigzag place or a zigzag stitch in place basically. This is the little stubby foot that goes with it. Um, I have changed my thread color. So just as a, I mean, it's up to you, but I like to pick a thread color that um, somehow goes with my button, not necessarily the dress. And these buttons are really hard to see, but there's like a little, it almost looks like a stitching line that goes along the outside. I don't think that this is showing up at all. But anyway, it makes them look like leather and they're not. But um, 
anyway, it's kind of, it's a lighter kind of a rust color that's in there. And so that's the color I'm wanting to pick up in my thread. But I'm going to show you. So if this, this is a two hole button. If this were a four hole button, I would do all the buttons, put them on through um, one set of holes. And then I would go back and do them all the second set of holes. But because it's just a two hole button, I actually just go through um, I do a buttonhole or a buttonhole, a uh, button stitch twice. So I've just set this right on top of the dot that I made. And because this is thin fabric, it slides under there pretty easily. And then I'm going to sink my needle, lower my presser foot, and then I just want to make sure that that's going to work, and it is. So now I hit the gas. And then I do it a second time. Okay, now I just raise my presser foot, move everything along. Oh, hold on, all of my buttons are still in their bag. Oops, which is not super helpful. All right, we move on to the next dot, which is right there. And I always check to make sure I'm not gonna accidentally hit the button. Yep, we're good. Okay, and so I just keep going down and I notice I'm not cutting any threads. I'm just doing this um, like chain style. It makes it so much quicker. When I learned this little tip, which is such a, you know, one of those tips where you're like, uh, that makes total sense. Why did I not think of that? It just made sewing buttons on button down shirts and everything else so much quicker. So then look how like lumpy it is. So once you're done doing that, then you can go back and cut both your top threads and your bobbin threads. And uh, yeah, then you're good to go. So now I'm going to um, take you back over to the other machine and I'm just gonna, just for better light, so I can show you how I do my crocheted um, thread uh, belt carriers. All right, now we're going to put belt carriers on this dress. I like thread belt carriers. Number one, they just keep like, I, cause I have made the fabric belt that went with this. It's just the, you know, tube of fabric or whatever, but you could also put a, um, like a leather belt on if you wanted to. I have no idea where my waist seam is. <laughs> there she is. Um, so I'm going to do a thread, um, carrier. I know people have mixed feelings about this. It just keeps the belt from moving around too much around your waist. Um, but then if you're not wearing a belt, they aren't like super, um, noticeable. It's not like having a belt loop right there. So I'm just going to do one on each side seam. And the way that I do that is, um, this is just the regular thread. Oops, sorry. Come on, get it together. Sorry about that. Some people have asked the creaky noise that you sometimes hear. I think it's the autofocus on my lens when it's going in and out. That whirling kind of sound like it just did. Okay, so I'm going to tr attempt to thread my needle. <laughs> um, and this, I'm going to thread it through four. I want four um, threads. What is happening right now? There we go. Okay. And I want them si fairly sizable because I'm going to be... I mean, that's probably like an arm's length. A little bit longer than if I were actually sewing with it because I'm, you're technically like crocheting it. All right, now I'm making it nice and uh, straight. So once, so it's doubled up. So I pulled it through the eye and it's doubled up. Can you see that at all? Maybe not. And now I'm going to do that again. So I just pull this really taut down with my fingers. And I attempt to get some thread off my spool here. Come on. Ooh. And then I'm just gonna 
thread it again. This just makes it a little bit thicker. If I am sewing buttons on by hand, I do the same thing. Um, it just makes it a th stronger, you have to go through the button less times. I also feel like I should have my readers on right now because I'm clearly having some issues. Even though my lights are brighter than the sun, for okay so now we have four strands and we want them fairly equal in well pretty equal in length Okay. So once we have all four strands, one, two, three. All right. Now we're going to knot the bottom of all four here. However, whatever your preferred method of knotting is, it doesn't have to be pretty. Can you kind of see that? Okay. So now. This is where I really want it to be able to zoom in. This is actually very um, therapeutic. This is how I do, if I'm doing a hook and eye, sometimes I'll use a thread bar for the eye. I use the same technique um, or a loop, whatever. So if you can see this on the dress, I've got my um, side seam that is running here and then the side seam of the skirt here and then this is my waist seam. So I'm gonna be doing this into the side seam on either side of the waist seam. So I'm gonna start up high and I'm basically coming from the back and I'm gonna go right through that seam line and I'm, oh, I feel like my belt's an inch and a half wide. So I'm gonna come up like an inch from the waist seam. Yeah, about an inch from the waist seam. Pull it straight through. Okay. So I've got I wonder if I should move this. This to be nice and bright. <laughs> okay. So I've come up, helps to be in frame. So I've come up from the back, here is my thread here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take just a little bite through there so that I basically have, you've gotta be careful it doesn't get, um, tangled. So I basically have a loop. So here is my thread that I've pulled through and I have this big loop. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller to make it more manageable. Okay, so I've got the, let me try and do this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the loop and then I've got back here is the thread that I've pulled out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna, I've got the loop. Can you see either side of the loop? And then here's the thread I just pulled through. I take my middle finger and I grab that thread and bring it through the loop. And then <laughs> pull everything tight. Okay, so there's the loop, there's the straight string. I pull that straight string through my loop and then put my fingers back through to make a new loop and pull it taut. Is that making sense? I hope it is. It's very therapeutic. And then it starts to make like a really pretty like friendship bracelet <laughs> looking. So now we're gonna do this until our little 
crocheted bit, which you can see is this part right here, till it measures, I think, again, my belt's like an inch and a half. Um, any belt I'd be wearing with this would be no more than an inch and a half. That's the biggest belt that I wear. So I'm going to do this until we're about two inches. Again, this uses quite a bit of thread. Uh, getting there. Okay, now when you get to the end that you want, so we've got our little loop again, I'm going to pull, and instead of, I'm just gonna pull the whole thing, and the needle is still attached here. Pull the whole thing, and that's gonna end it. And then, I'm going to go down because our needle is still attached. So we're back at our side seam here and I'm going to go about a half of an inch below because I want it, um, you know, we've gone an inch above and now a half of an inch below because I want a little bit of wiggle room there. And so now I've gone back through and then on the wrong side, I'm just going to knot it off per normal. And then cut my threads. So there we've got a belt carrier. Okay, hopefully that made sense. So I'm just going to go um, put the second one on, and then this dress is finished. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for sewing along with me. And um, I will now show you me in the dress and the final twirls. I'll see you guys next time.